Hey again. Well, today is the day. Uh, I took the body and gave it a good thick coat of Beelin vinyl sealer that seals in the wood so that you don't have the paint getting into the pores of the wood, just soaking into the wood rather than building a finish. I'm going to be using Beelin instrument lacquer and Beelin reactor reducer and Clertone stain red. So after I did the vinyl sealer take, this is a triple O, quadruple O, the finest grade steel wool you can get. Sometimes I will use some 600 grit, but you just want little circles, take the sheen off. Don't worry about that. Uh, binding too much and all this is going to do is give that I like to use steel wool for this because it will kind of, if there's any trash in the sealer it has a tendency to, to snag it rather than having to sand through it It'll snag it and pull it out. In my mind, at least. Um, you definitely don't want to sand all the sealer back off and do two or three coats of it. That's just uh, wasteful and unneeded, and it, it's not going to work. You're going to have to have that coat of sealer on it. Kind of think of it as a... Uh, a barrier that has to be in place and if you sand through it well then it's not in place anymore but you can see I don't spend a lot of time on it with the sealer we're going to be spending a lot of time getting very acquainted with this body when we start wet sanding between coats and whatnot There we go. Then just wipe him off. Uh, paint work is not bad to do. One thing I do not believe in is, of course I do use it sometimes, uh, is the aerosols. If you could open one up brand new, use it from beginning to end and never shut it off, they would be great. Unfortunately, that never happens, and it's not going to happen. So uh, sometimes I will use, <laughs> as I blow the dust off of it. Sometimes I use an airbrush. Uh, this has the three different tips. Everything from uh, like a pencil width spray pattern up to about an inch and a half. Sometimes I'll use this. I have an automotive touch-up spray gun that I use from time to time just to reminisce. It belonged to my father. I'm, once in a while I'll pull it out and use it. For the most part I use just a good old tried and true. Uh, nothing real fancy, but it gets the job done. This is a, uh, a cobalt that I've had for Lord knows probably 15 years now. Uh, the trick is just to clean it. And anytime you spray of course, you want to have a, uh, a good quality mask. This is a 3M mask. There again, I've probably had this one for three or four years. Uh, it comes in a pouch. Okay. Put it in the pouch, reseal it, and uh, you can use it until it loses its elasticity. When you start being able to smell uh, the paint, it's time to get a new mask for sure don't want to get that in your lungs it'll never come out it's just there forever so I think we're about ready to go ahead and mix 
I'm going to mix it without a mask, even though I shouldn't. Usually I wear my mask to mix it, but I want to show you guys how I mix it. And what I'm going to do is mix enough up to give this thing two or three coats, and then we're going to go from there. That's when we're going to start doing a little wet sanding and start working this finish, building this finish up. Um, anybody that tells you, oh, it came out of the gun like that is, uh, I'm going to say they're a liar. Actually, they're a, probably a pretty good painter because that's what all the, the really good painters will tell you. But it's not true. Uh, there's always something to do after you spray. The good thing about the lacquer is you don't have to worry about things like uh, runs because we're going to wet sand it out anyways between coats. Every I usually do about three, maybe four coats depending on how thick they are, then I wet sand it. Three, maybe four, wet sand it. We're going to mix this color up. We want this to I want the wood grain to come through. I don't know if it's going to or not. Um, with this swamp ash, it's pretty tight. Pretty tight grain, so it was hard to get the stain to, and to really pop the uh, wood grain out. I just have a little beef jerky glass. I have some mixing cups over there. But you know, you're going to put four ounces in a mixing cup. That's kind of crazy. You only need about, I don't know, four to eight ounces. It only takes a couple ounces to do a coat. It starting out in the morning, so you see it in my coffee. But we're going to mix this in a 50-50 ratio. I use a turkey baser to get it out so I don't have to worry about the lip. Making a huge mess. And it takes a few squirts, but it does a good job. that up the rest of the way with a little acetone when I do my gun. I do it now real quick. I'm going to clean that up and I'm going to tape off the side of my binding just to make it easier in the end. I'm not going to worry about the face of the binding because we're going to scrape that off after the paint's done. So let me clog up that smell, mask this off, clean that out, and then we're going to continue. Okay, went around the tape. I'm going to get some good pictures for you. Um, you want to tape off your neck pocket. I do. Uh, if you watch the video about getting the most sound out of your instrument, you want wood on wood, you don't want paint in between there. Little paint's not bad, I mean, it's, it's not going to kill it. But you also don't want to put 12 coats of paint in it. Take your time, it doesn't matter if it takes 500 little pieces of tape to go around the size of this border. And if you'll notice, that's going to hinder my spraying. So what I'm going to do is take my knife and just trim it up. You're not going to hurt the binding because the binding is going to get scraped anyways. 
You just want to make sure that you can get the paint all the way up to the binding. I used to use the good automotive uh, tape, and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting a nice tight edge. It was always wicking through and getting on the binding on the sides, no matter what I did. And then I realized the lacquer will soften the binding and it will wick it in. So, uh, you're doing the best you can to keep the paint off the sides. Don't worry about the top. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to mix this paint and we're going to spray. Okay. Binding's cut. Go around, make sure that everything's like you want it. mess up it's not a huge loss you just have to sand it down and start over manufacturers don't tape off the binding at all they have people that will sit there and scrape the sides the top and do a perfect job on it uh, I'm primarily a pretty lazy person so I try to take the easy way out without compromising quality but uh, I'm going to mix this up real quick because this is some nasty stuff. Okay. 50 50 lacquer and reducer. I've already ran some lacquer thinner through my spray gun to get it to uh, halfway adjust. There's a lot of good videos on adjusting spray equipment, so we're not going to worry about that. And I want transparent, so I'm not going to put a whole lot of tint in it. Wow. Maybe that much. Um, there we go. Man, that looks like a glass of wine or something there. That's going to be a pretty color on this guitar. Especially with the wood grain popping through. <coughs> I'm going to hang the guitar up. I don't have a fancy spray booth. I spray it and then I open up the garage door. I'm going to spray Hang the guitar up, put this in the gun, spray it, and then I'll let you see it after we're done with that. Good morning. Little update. It's getting red. Uh, I've got six coats of that tinted lacquer on it now. And I pulled my tape just to, I wanted to see the comparison. I wanted to see if I'm getting the right hue and right tint of red six coats and about every two to three coats I'll go over it with some 800 grit wet dry sandpaper wet sand it out a little bit at this point in the uh, paint what we're worried about is the tint the color the hue we're not building a finish yet we're not worried about you know how shiny it is that's one of the things I like the most about working with lacquer it, uh, you build it a little at a time and you can a lot more control over it so I'm going to continue on with mask this back off I think I'm going to give it one maybe two more coats of this red just to even it out and uh, then we'll come back We'll scrape this binding and we'll start working on the actual clear coat, the actual finish of it. So I just want to give you a quick little uh, little update. Okay. It's red. And I took the tape off. Now what we have to do is scrape this binding down 
you want to get it as level as you possibly can without touching the red paint and then the clear coat is going to make up the difference and you'll never know uh, the way to do this they sell scrapers just for this work I just use a utility knife blade and when it's high you don't have to worry about it too much hold it at about a 15 degree angle to make sure you don't hit the paint and just scrape it when you get close to the paint keep a constant check be very careful this is a uh, probably the most demanding part of the whole paint job is getting this binding scraped correctly if you go too far and you go into the paint then uh, you're gonna have to do touch-up work and then and even then it's not going to be the right height so take your time do a really good job when I get close to the paint you can either uh, choke up on this so you just barely on the uh, binding make sure the tip of it rides along side the paint but not on the paint sometimes I will use an exacto knife to do this also this is the most important part of the whole job though if you want to make it a nice guitar a good quality guitar once you get around the top then you're gonna get the side I'm going to do this, and uh, then we'll be ready to uh, clear coat. Sorry. This is the worst part of the whole job. I'm going to go ahead and get started on it. And after I do the top and the side, I'll show you what I do with the net pocket. Okay. Got the front and the sides all uh, scraped. There's a couple of little nicks and places that I went through. Not a big deal. A uh, little bit of paint and uh, an artist's brush. And clean it up. You never know. Now I'm doing the neck pocket. We left these a little bit long. And what I do is I take a file and a piece of sandpaper. This 220 grit. You want to hold the binding because you don't want to pull back and pull it away from the body. But you simply make sure that it is absolutely even with the neck pocket because the neck pocket we already know fits perfect. I always pay particularly close attention to this part because this is the part everybody can notice when they, they look at the binding, they look at where it meets the neck. And let's do a fitment test here. And I need a little more. We're just going to keep doing this until we get that neck to fit perfect. It was a really tight fit. With the wood. That is exceptional. But uh, so now it's on to clear coat and wet sanding about every three coats. I haven't done the wet sanding part. I figured I'd wait until uh, 
do that as part of the actual finishing and buffing it out. I'll show you the proper way to wet sand. Uh, get a perfect finish. Now, there are a few little chatter marks in this. Not a big deal. Uh, that's one of the beautiful things about working with instrument lacquer. You can just put it on until you fill up anything that is a little bit low or bring everything up to you match whatever a little high. Uh, super easy stuff to work with and just build the finish as you need the finish to be until you get it perfect. And uh, that's what we're going to show you here. So far so good. Everything's looking great. Uh, that neck fit, you don't even need bolts, man. This is going to be a nice looking guitar. Definitely getting there. Might uh, mock it up, take a picture. I can't ever resist doing that. But uh, until next time, have a good week. Have a good day. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Like the channel. Leave questions, comments, concerns. Uh, email address at the beginning and the end of every video. And when you go to our YouTube homepage, there's a link to our Facebook homepage. Uh, a lot of the materials that we find, a lot of the materials I use, like the PowerPoint presentations and things like that, will be on there. Uh, download them and use them. Until next time, see you later.